Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. I'm your host, Doug Peters. Our guest on today's episode is Katie Bangsness. Katie is the account executive for NCL Government Capital, and today we're going to be discussing leasing. Welcome, Katie, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for having me. Katie, can you tell us and our listeners a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, your family, where you live, and schooling? Yeah, so I grew up in a small town in Minnesota. The entire county only has one stoplight, Glenwood, Minnesota. Um, and then I left the small city for the big Fargo, North Dakota um, to go to college, um, go bison. Um, and then after college, um, shortly after college, I should say, I got married and moved back to my hometown, which I said I would never go back. Um, and actually, my husband and I bought the house three doors down from uh, the home I grew up in. So back to my my old stomping grounds. So does that make you a Carson Wentz fan? Was he a bison? He was. And did they beat up on the lowly Minnesota Gophers at that point in time? Or was that a different school? Nope, that was us. And that was a, that was a good time to be a bison. We used to, I had friends that went, uh, that were Gophers. So we make the travel down to uh, the Metrodome at the time. I think we were playing in um, and watch the Bison beat up on the Gophers. That was that was a good time. Wow, wow, that had to be exciting for a small what is the D two college or D one underscore? Yeah, they're D one underscore, but uh, they 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 do a good job and they had just turned D1 when uh, I started going there. So we were okay. still playing a lot of D2 schools. And I think they have, do they have a dome up there that they yes, play in? The Fargo okay. dome. Yep. Okay. All right. Yes, so they have loud. a, they have a Zamboni machine there. I don't know if you ever saw it or got mm. to drive that one. It's not an ice <laughs> resurface or Zamboni machine, but it's a grasshopper machine that rolled up okay. the turf at the, uh, at the dome. So, uh, kind of cool that uh, you have that connection there. How yeah. did you get how did you get your start in the world of leasing? Yeah, so um, short, so shortly after getting married and moving back to my hometown, I kind of switched directions um, in what I was going to do with my career. Um, and I started working for um, NCL and our sister company LSC Financial. So I really started in leasing with um, NCL, and that was just about 10 years ago. Um, but I started in a very different role here at NCL. I started more in the analyst and documentation departments, um, kind of learned all of that, and then slowly worked my way up um, to my current role, which um, is account executive. But really, I spend my day um, talking to end users, customers, um, about their needs for leasing and financing, and then working with vendors um, to help their customers um, be able to source their equipment or their equipment or products. And I'd say, you know, the the fact that I was able to start kind of in the analyst and documentation department definitely helps me now in my current role because I understand the whole process, what goes into everything, what special documents are going to come into play with certain types of customers. So it's definitely helped me um, understand the whole world of lease and financing. Which side of the business do you prefer, the selling or the analytic side of things? Definitely the, the my current role, the selling, if you will. I mean, I, I'm basically just chit-chatting on the phone all day with different people. I get to do a little bit of traveling. Um, that versus analyzing the numbers. I'm, I'm more of a face-to-face -face type of person. We certainly have the personality for it, and it's uh, been great to work with you over the time that we have. And I, I highly recommend NCL to people, uh, especially on the municipal side of things, if they have to go to bid because of uh, your source well contract. Uh, can you tell us and um, our listeners a bit about NCL and what all that they do, what type of leasing you specialize in, uh, those types of things? Yeah, so NCL Government Capital 
um, has been around since early 2000, and we are a lease and finance provider specializing in the public sector. So state and local government um, education, both public and private. Um, and then we do have also a vertical um, for nonprofit healthcare, um, your standard 501c3 nonprofit organization. And we really are here to put together um, customized funding solutions um, for the end user. And our traditional uh, go-to-market strategy, if you will, has been through vendor partners like Zamboni. So um, Zamboni has a customer um, that has a need for a new unit, but maybe doesn't have um, the funds or all of the funds to pay for it, um, NCL would put together that um, financing solution that helps that customer move forward with the purchase. Um, through our history with the public sector, um, we've been a longtime um, partner uh, to SourceWell, uh, previously NJPA, previously something else uh, before that. And at the beginning of our relationship, we really just worked as a value add to offer um, funding solutions for the, the contract holders. And as SourceWell continued to grow, um, offering more and more contract solutions, so did NCL. Um, and then in 2015, SourceWell did decide to do a solicitation specifically for lease and financing. So we um, responded to a bid just like all of their other contract holders, um, again, specific to lease and financing. In 2015, we were lucky enough to be the sole awarded contract holder for that contract. Um, and then we re-responded to the new bid uh, the beginning of 2020, I believe it was, um, and we're again re-awarded. So we're the only lender that has a competitively bid uh, contract for lease and financing through SourceWell. And then the other piece of that is, to my knowledge, SourceWell is the only cooperative contract that has a competitively bid um, contract for lease and financing that spans any um, agency and every asset. There are a few that are very specific for a certain type of asset, um, but nothing that's um, so broad as the one that SourceWell has. So it's, it's a very special contract to us. We're proud to hold it, and we're proud to work with all of the other SourceWell contract award winners. Well, and I think that you've got a lease with the city of Santa Clarita. Uh, out here in California on a new machine. So that's been some great synergy. Do you, can you share uh, some details with regards to that? Yeah, so that's a great story and, and really how we work so well with um, other vendor partners um, when they're utilizing their own source well contract um, and then the customer sees the value in the source well contract, right? So it satisfies their bid requirements on the equipment. But if they're also going to have a need for financing, then they can also use our source well contract. So two contracts in, in one um, set up there. And now they've satisfied the bid requirement, whatever that may be in their jurisdiction for the financing side. So yeah, the city of Santa Clarita was using Zamboni's source well contract, again, for the Zamboni. That streamlined that purchase, and they are going to use a, a financing structure um, only available to the public sector, um, which gives them the lowest cost of funds, and it's all within our source well contract. So they've, you know, checked all those boxes and satisfied all those requirements. So they'll be able to move forward very quickly and seamless, seamlessly through the, the procurement process there. Yeah, it was very helpful for me to have NCL have the SourceWell contract uh, because when I was talking to the customer, this is there, there's very few municipalities out here that own ice rinks in California. And this facility in the COVID time, uh, the owner, it was a private facility and the owner was going to close up shop. And there was a lot of information out in the public uh, the public came forth and said, hey, we want an ice rink. And they basically got the city to step in and acquire the facility. Uh, that put it into a situation where the facility needed equipment because they were 
um, dealing with machines that were probably 20 plus years old from when the facility first opened up and the right. municipality didn't have these numbers budgeted. So you guys stepped forth when I told the gentleman, I said, look, I can help you out with the purchase of the machine through a source well contract. And I've got an entity that can handle it if you want to do leasing. And I think that they jumped straight at that and, and reached out directly to you. Is that the case? Yeah, definitely. And I think um, something to kind of point out here would be, um, you'll hear me using the word financing very interchangeably with the word leasing. So in the city of Santa Clarita's um, example, they actually are doing something called a, a tax exempt municipal lease, which again has that word lease in it, but it really looks and feels a lot more like financing. So I think they're going with a, a five year term. At the end of the five years, they're going to own that Zamboni because we all know that a Zamboni is going to last much longer than five years, right? So um, they'll own that free and clear. There's no big purchase option or anything like that. So that's a, that's a structure, not something that NCL um, you know, came up with many lenders use it, um, but it is the lowest cost of, of lease or financing available to the public sector. So we utilize that quite frequently with our source well members. That kind of segues into the next question I've got. Can you share with our listeners the benefits of leasing? Yeah, I think um, anytime an agency or a nonprofit group is is considering lease or financing, it's really coming down to the budget, right? And it's either they don't have money or not enough money to make a purchase. So how can we leverage this financing option to still move forward with this purchase? Or it has to do with the timing of the money. They they have money budgeted, but maybe it's not until next year or it's going to be over the next three years. So can you leverage what money you do have in a financing solution to get what you need now? Um, oftentimes, especially when we're talking in the equipment world, Zamboni is a great example as the um, the the age of the Zambo, you know, the Zamboni ages. Maybe there's more maintenance calls or you have to replace batteries or do things like that. When you're looking at those costs compared to the cost of getting a new unit and making some finance payments for three, four, five years, oftentimes the, the cost of financing is less than the cost of maintaining outdated equipment. So um, those, are, those are things that most of our customers are um, analyzing and thinking about when they're weighing their options of leasing or financing. Um, some of the direct benefits to financing, again, in the public sector, you know, again, just leveraging multiple budget cycles, so paying for it over an extended period of time versus depleting the capital budget all at one time. Um, sometimes maybe rinks don't have a, a, a large budget compared to a a bigger um, city or municipal department. So they have to really do um, a lot more with a lot less. So this can be a way to still have the top of the line and, and best assets, at, um, but move forward with them at the best value. Yeah, it, it's something that I try to talk a bit more about leasing now with tighter budgets. It, it's basically telling them that they've got the ability to get into a piece of equipment without a large capital outlay up front. And that to me is a huge benefit. And you guys have been been great uh, with working with us to get our customers into new equipment uh, at low uh, capital outlay up front. You talked about different types of leasing and I refer to certain things as it's not a typical lease like somebody might have when they go to um, lease a car where you drive it for three years and then you can choose to buy it. Uh, you can turn it back in and get into another lease. Can you explain to the listeners um, the difference between leasing one of our machines and what they might think of as a more traditional lease? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, as a uh, lend lender um, or funding solutions provider, we have a wide variety of structures that we can offer. So when I'm talking to a Zamboni customer, I really want to know what their goal is with that um, piece of equipment. Typically, 
I'd say probably 99% of the time, especially um, within, it, within the Zamboni space, they want to own that because the life cycle of a Zamboni is, is much longer than any, any term I could offer them. Um, so we do have the traditional leasing, like a car lease that you think of where at the end you can either turn it in or you can purchase it. Um, if for some reason that is the desire of the customer, we can offer that. But especially in the public sector space, most customers use that tax exempt municipal lease purchase, which if anyone's familiar with a dollar buyout, it's very similar to that. It does have a, a lower pricing schedule than your traditional commercial lease, but it's financing. It's fixed payments monthly or an annually spread out over a certain term and then the customer retains ownership at the end, no purchase option. So again, I, I'm, we do our best at the beginning of, of conversations with the end users to understand their goal, understand their budget needs, what maybe special requirements does their budget have. They don't have um, money for a first payment until July 1 when their budget starts over, but they wanna um, get the order in now. Those are all things that um, we can help with, deferring payments, maybe an extended term is, is necessary because they need to keep that annual expense down um, because they have X amount of dollars for this purchase over the next five years. All of those are, are questions that we're asking um, the customer on the front side, and then we can deliver you know, a proposal that best meets their needs. So it's kind of like what we do with the machine is find out what options that they're going to need to have and then tailor it around that. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a one size fits all. I mean, everyone has their own specific budget and requirements and, and we have a tr tremendous amount of flexibility. So the more we can and learn about the customer and what their needs are, the better we can help them. Katie, are there tax advantages for privately owned facilities in leasing a machine versus a straight purchase? This being a privately owned facility, maybe there's not in Minnesota, there's not, there's a handful, um, but elsewhere in the country, we've got a lot of private rink owners. Is there a benefit to them to leasing versus owning or leasing to own uh, that would be tax advantageous for them? Yeah, my husband's a CPA, I am not, so I certainly can't give official tax advice, but I will say, you know, for the privately owned side of things, there can be tax advantages, um, uh, you know, depending on the type of structure. So the depreciation component to things, um, but also writing off um, the, the rental, the lease or the rental payments um, can come into play. So it just depends again on what, what are the goals of the rink in this case um, and what tax advantages that that might support moving forward with which type of lease structure. Sourcewell has uh, recently, well, I don't know if it's recently is the correct word to use, but uh, they've migrated into Canada and we are pushing real hard. My bucket list has been made. Uh, one of the items I can check off the box that uh, was to have a machine, a Zamboni machine sold uh, in Canada under the Sourcewell contract. Does NCL uh, have the ability either on its own or through partners uh, to offer leasing in the Canadian marketplaces where source well contracts are accepted? The, the quick answer is yes. So NCL is um, based here in the United States, uh, but we do have lending partners within Canada that we can leverage to help with um, lease and financing, again, focusing on that public sector. So we would still be the point of contact and we'll manage and um, maintain that relationship and um, kind of move through the, the um, opportunity, if you will. Um, but yes, we, we can go into Canada. Um, I believe our source well contract works there as well. Um, so all, all new and exciting things for us, but yes, we have those lenders and those partners in place and are ready to um, work up there as well. In addition to Zamboni machines, can you share with our listeners some of the customers, other customers that you've worked with, other product lines that you've worked with? Yeah, so we have um, a, a sales team much um, 
broader than just me and everyone kind of focuses on a specific industry or vertical. Um, so we have um, financing solutions. We have a pretty big heavy equipment department. Um, so tractors, construction equipment, uh, street sweepers. Uh, we have a pretty extensive technology, copiers, phones, computers, security systems, um, the park and rec side of things. So the Zambonis, the artificial turf, playgrounds, fitness equipment. Um, and then the other um, last kind of bucket, if you will, is the um, uh, buildings and facilities. So actual construction, um, HVAC, um, maybe renovations, um, things like that. So it's there's, there's not much that we can't uh, provide financing for. So when you're offering this financing, are you typically working with the manufacturer or would you be working with the distributor or is it a combination of both that uh, that you're working on? It's a combination. Typically, it starts with the manufacturer and then it funnels down to their distribution network, whether that's on the, a direct side or or through their dealers, if you will. Um, and we also have quite a few, especially with our source well contract of end users reaching out to us directly saying, I'm going to be buying this Zamboni, but I do need financing. And then they're reaching out to us, you know, before Zamboni can even uh, even send them over to us. So. Um, how has the COVID world impacted your guys' business, and is it something that you've seen an increase in financing of equipment or leasing of equipment because of the uh, tightened budgets due to taking several months off in the recreation world? Yeah, definitely, and I do think that um, certainly on the municipal side of things, their budgets are going to be tight for at least the next few years. So we have seen um, an increased interest and reach out from customers wanting to understand it more, leveraging the source well contracts quite a bit more um, because they have to do so much more with fewer resources. So if they can leverage those contracts, that saves time and money, right? Um, but yeah, we you know we've had customers reaching out just about you know plain old fashioned financing, wondering how creative we can get. So leveraging what CARES money they're going to get, but kind of bridging the gap between what they, you know, the money they have and what they actually need to purchase with that money. Um, planning for future budget cycles. They know, you know, budgets are going to be tight for a few more years and they have a pretty big equipment purchase coming up that was originally planned, say next budget year and, and now the money's not there. So yes, I mean, we certainly have seen an, an increased interest and, and reach out from customers and and we're putting our creative hats on to, to help all of them. Is NCL offering any kind of special packages or unique opportunities at this time that uh, maybe wouldn't normally be there? Yeah, so this isn't necessarily something that we weren't offering before, but we certainly now are seeing it used a lot more and something that we want to make sure that all of our customers know, and it's it's the ability to defer your first lease payment. So this comes into play um, a lot when a customer has the need now, but their budget doesn't start over for a few months or they don't have money in until a future budget cycle. So we are actually, um, and have always, but um, again, making sure that customers know they can defer their first lease payment up to 12 months. Again, the idea there is to purchase and receive the equipment that they need now, but pay for it in their next budget cycle or begin paying for it, I should say, in their next budget cycle. So I'd say that's probably something that has been utilized much more since COVID and since municipalities have re, you know, opened back up and started making some buying decisions that they're, they're leveraging quite a bit. In our world, meaning the ice rink world and ice or surfacer world, uh, we have facilities that are seasonal that um, operate on different cycles. They have different uh, peaks and valleys to their cash flow. Is that something or how creative can NCL get to help out uh, customers that have something similar to that? Not just Zamboni, but uh, any, any other customers that uh, has ebbs and flows. Yeah, that's a that's a great point and a good question. And I'm actually working on a project. It's not a Zamboni project. It's an HVAC project, but the customer has the need for the HVAC project, 
um, but they have a pretty large bond payment due for the next few years. So what we did was we made the first couple of years of the HVAC financing smaller, and then they increase after the, they've cleared out the bond. Um, the same thing could be applied for more of a seasonal. So you can make payments um, due you know, in the winter months when the rink is operating, and then if it closes down during the summer, we can do smaller or no payments during the summer. So those are all things, again, um, you know, if I'm doing my job, I'll find out um, in that discovery call with the customer and kind of build that structure around what their needs are. Yeah, it's, I think you guys operate the similar way we do. As I said, I tell customers that, um, you know, I'm not offended if somebody asks as long as they're not offended if I have to say no. And if you don't ask the question, you're never going to get the answer. Exactly, exactly. Do you recall any customers that uh, have been joint customers through Zamboni and NCL uh, along with Sourcewell, so the, the trifecta, I guess it would be. I know that uh, we've got Santa Clarita, but I believe you guys are handling financing for uh, a rink in Victor, Idaho, that uh, the Teton Valley. Uh, do you have any recollection of any other ones that uh, you work with uh, selling Zamboni machines? The city of Nagani. N Nagani, um, Michigan, yeah. Yep. Uh, Clary Anderson Arena which was in New Jersey, I believe. Um, Hartford, Vermont, if I remember correctly. I think that one also goes by... Um, West Hartford, maybe, town of West Hartford, Vermont. They have a park, park and rock, and I think they bought an electric machine. That goes back a few years, but yeah. You guys yeah. have been, Katie, you guys have been great to work with, and it's like when I see you at H2O and uh, your boss at the H2O, and I know you guys are very well connected with the uh, source well formerly njpa uh it, it's for me to be able to put my reputation on the line to give you guys out as a reference for financing it makes my life so much easier and i know that um i'm not going to have a customer have a problem and i've had customers who've had leases with leasing companies who were not very ethical. And I won't go into details on one of them, but uh, they were made whole on the deal, yet they still took the equipment back at, because of a technicality and uh, they ended up selling the machines and cost me customers. So um, the, not everybody operates the way that you guys do. And I wanna assure our listeners out there that if you are looking to do financing your municipality as an option um, if you jump into a conversation with katie she'll look after you and their company will take very good care of you yeah thanks doug i appreciate you saying that we do take it very seriously here i mean everything we do at ncl is really designed to complement the public purchasing process so i mean everything from the way we quote transactions to the way we document and invoice again all designed around that we understand that process very well um, and at the end of the day we're trying to help um, build up and improve the communities that we live in that our vendor partners live in and ultimately that the end users live in so have you ever driven a zamboni machine I have not. I, I've i sent you a picture of the rink we have in our backyard, and I have to resurface that ice the old-fashioned way with a shovel and a hose. Well, we need to have you step up. Tell your husband you want a Zamboni 100 for your Christmas present. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And all that time in North Dakota and Fargo, you didn't, uh, all the years in college, you didn't get on a machine or talk to a hockey player to get you on a machine? No, well, NDSU didn't have, they had a club hockey team, but not um, a, a NCAA hockey team. That was UND, and we were big rivals back then. I think still probably are. So, no, there was no Zamboni riding back in those days. Well, as a Golden Gopher fan, we won't talk about the formerly known as Fighting Sioux, which, <laughs> uh, in one, one of the finest rinks in the land, the Ralph Engelstadt arena up there if you haven't been in that it's a great place to to go visit and they built the little ralph in thief river falls uh minnesota which is also quite the incredible facility um, mr engelstadt was very kind to the areas he went to college and grew up in so i'm a little embarrassed this is probably not the, the best place to to disclose this but i'm pretty new to the whole hockey world i didn't grow up um with 
you know, my, my parents didn't watch hockey. We didn't have hockey at my high school. My husband is a big longtime hockey player and fan. Um, and now my son does play hockey. So I'm getting into it. We're st I'm still at the might level though. Well, you need to get your daughter into it as well, because that's the sport that uh, girls can uh, get a, uh, a scholarship to um, if they've got some talent. There's a lot of growing programs. And we did a podcast with uh, Lindsey Fry, who is the radio analyst for the Arizona Coyotes, one of the few women that's doing that. And she's a former Olympian, and she grew up in that hockey mecca of Chandler, Arizona, and turned out to be an Olympian. So this could happen to uh, your family as well. There you go. Keep the Vangsness name um, on top of your mind for the future. I will be looking for that. So <laughs> as I fashion myself to be a foodie, um, and I'm going to assume that you've got down to the Twin Cities, and maybe there might be one even closer. Are you a big fan of the White Castle Burgers? I have never eaten at White Castle, nor have I ever purchased them out of the frozen food section of the grocery store. <laughs> Well, you don't want to do that, but you really do. The next time you're down into the uh, Twin Cities, you need to get yourself a White Castle. And you need to have the whole experience. You need to be able to go into the restaurant and watch okay. them cooked and then have them. And it's usually better done later at night, maybe <laughs> if you're trying to prevent a hangover. But uh, I won't say why I have that knowledge. <laughs> Would have came what, in handy in my Fargo days. There you go. What would be your favorite food, Katie? You know, I'm a pretty, I'm a Midwest gal, so I'm pretty bland. But, you know, I love like chips and salsa, queso, those types of things. And steak being what it is in Minnesota, where you can go to any grocery store, get a cellophane yeah. wrap steak, and it's going to be awesome. I have to assume that that might be high up on your list as well. Definitely in the summertime, anytime, anything we can grill um, outside is high on my requested pork chops, sweet corn when it's in season. Um, those are those are top priority on the, the meal planning. How about walleye tacos? I probably should have said that, especially my husband is a big um, fisherman. Yes, I love walleye. I don't know that I'd request it every time. Yeah. It's funny, my mom was just out here and uh, made some halibut fish tacos for her, and uh, she walked away pretty impressed uh, that she enjoyed those. So best meal ever, would that be up in your hometown, or would that be on one of your trips on the road when you're doing conventions? Oh, we definitely eat like kings when we're on the road um, traveling to conventions and things. That's a hard one, though, but I definitely, you know, love anytime I can get fresh seafood out on the road. That's what I'm ordering for sure. Great, great. And in your travels, where has your favorite place that you've gone to? Where, where is that? Hmm. Well... I mean, I, for my honeymoon, I was in Playa Mujeres. That was quite some time ago, but I really did love that, that in Mexico, beautiful place, um, beautiful water, and then traveling over to Isla Mujeres. Um, I love a good Vegas trip though, too. So there you go. <laughs> Sounds good. Katie, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to bring up about NCL, any programs, anything that, uh, uh, I've missed in our questions today uh, to talk about the benefits of your company and the leasing programs. No, I mean, I think we hit everything. I think the, the biggest takeaways, again, really are to leverage our source well contract when you're able to, um, and then, you know, leverage the, our ability to be as creative and, and flexible as possible. So, you know, tell us what your needs are and we'll kind of, you know, build that structure around, around those needs. And I, I, again, I will repeat this, uh, anybody who's looking for a lease, uh, you know, there are other companies that are out there. There's another company that, uh, that we um, have recommended in the past and will still continue to do so. But um, I know when I turn people over to Katie that they get looked after the way that I would want to be looked after. And uh, her company does an awesome job. So if you're out there looking for a lease, your municipality, even if you're non-municipality, uh, they can offer things up and, and shop them to take a look at what packages they have to offer because they really will take care of you from the front end all the way to the back end to make sure that uh, the whole entire process is a great experience. Yeah, and we love working with 
Zamboni and all of your customers. They're great. Katie, we want to thank you very much for joining us today. We want to thank everyone for listening in to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Expert podcast. Have a question for one of our experts or an idea for a future episode? Please email your questions or request to info at Zamboni.com. For more information and additional podcast episodes, please visit Zamboni.com forward slash podcast or search Ask the Zamboni Experts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. This is Doug Peters wishing you an ice day.